So my hope in this video is to provide a unique perspective on getting hired as a cinematographer. I feel like one of the biggest questions that I get from aspiring DPs or people that are transitioning from the AC world or the GE world to becoming a DP is how do I get hired as a DP? How do you get hired more often? How do you get hired by multiple different production companies? How do you stay consistent as a DP? Most people who would respond to that type of question would probably say keep shooting, uh, get familiar with more cameras, lenses, create spec work, passion projects, DM directors, producers, cold call production companies, whatever, you know, fill in the blank essentially. And I've definitely been the person to say the following to somebody. And I've also been on the flip side being told these things by somebody when I want to ask that question of how do you get hired more? And none of those are wrong. They're all right. Those are all things that you should be doing. But my aim for today is to provide a different perspective uh, that, that doesn't really fit that, those answers, essentially. I realized something recently that I really maybe never have thought of as to why I get hired so often as a DP. And I want to share this with you in, in hopes that it will gain a new perspective uh, for those of you that are looking for something that isn't one of those responses that I said prior. And before I talk about it, this isn't a one size fits all piece of advice. What I'm gonna say isn't gonna be for everybody. It's gonna be for a select few of you that resonate with this message today. And that's totally okay. Not everything is for everybody. Last week or a couple weeks ago, depending on when this video comes out, uh, I was on a four day shoot and on the last day, I decided to do a in-person podcast in my hotel room with the owner of the production company that I was shooting for, the executive producer. He was also uh, the writer, director for one of the commercials that we were shooting. And he said something to me that I knew, but I didn't, it was more of like a subconscious thing. I never really thought about it too much. And uh, he essentially explains from his perspective of a producer, director, why he hires a DP, why he hires somebody. And the message was kind of directed towards me and how he came to me and uh, how I came on his radar. So I'm gonna play a little snippet of this podcast episode that really opened my eyes to this new perspective on why he hired me as a DP and what aspects of a DP or a person are important to him to bring onto his productions. So this snippet is from my podcast, The Creative Gap, with guest Chris Allman. The episode is not out yet, but here is the snippet talking about why he hires a DP. As a director, when you're hiring a DP, yes, you're hiring somebody with great skill and you want to be able to trust them to create that vision. But on a human level, you're like the right hand person to that director. Deep, like You have to have that personal connection to be able to trust each other. And I find that... Uh, people that just reach out to random people on Instagram, like, oh, you know, hire me. It's never going to work because yeah. there's no personal trust there. Mm -hmm. It's about building the relationship first, then eventually it'll get to something. But I feel like it's a long journey to actually be able to get to work with somebody that you really want to. Yes. DMs are tough, man. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Sliding it's, in there. <laughs> it's just because there's so many. Yeah. And, you know, how do you differentiate yourself and how do you make it look in any way good faith? Mm is just nearly impossible. So, I mean, what I would say, at thing, I mean, I, I think I'm not 100% sure how you initially got on my radar, but I know for a fact that somehow through the internet, it, it might have been YouTube and Danny, but mm. I, for some reason, I don't think it is. Mm. I think it was probably Matt knew who you were, right. and I saw you in that circle, and then, but, but anyways, the big thing there for me was I was aware of you. I knew who you were. I knew your work. And then when the opportunity came and I needed to bring someone in, there was already a certain amount of built in trust mm -hmm. because just through what you're putting out there, um, you know, obviously with the podcast and stuff, I knew that you are a thoughtful person, which is important to me and anyone that's going to be a around on set. Uh, but more than that, you know, I knew obviously already your DP ability. I knew 
I felt like a lot about your personality and stuff like that through just what you put out there. Yeah. So I think that's an interesting thing is I forget about that is how much I put me out there in public. Yeah. I forget about that a lot. And that's, I mean, that's, I literally just read a book about this and it was about marketing in that way Mm -hmm. in the, the, like, you know, you want people to know, like, and trust you and all that stuff. Um, but I think what's an interesting new version of that is, you know, you have YouTubers that you watch Mm -hmm. or podcasters that you listen to or any of these different things and your brain does not differentiate between me listening to you on a podcast with Pedro and me talking to you right now face to face. And so there's this really interesting thing happening then in the neuroscience of it that when you do put that stuff out there, first of all, there's an incredible responsibility to make sure that you're representing yourself in the way that you, that you want to. You know, like, uh, but beyond that, it's the important thing that I think is you're putting out all these different versions of spec work, Mm. essentially, Mm. because you're putting out spec work of like, this is who I am as a person, because I know that you agree with this. It is way more important on a long shoot away from home be a good person that you're a good person and that you like like to hang out with the people that you're that you're with because that's that's a lot of production is hurry up and wait or you know things go bad a lot that weather doesn't cooperate and you need to carry on with these people uh and you know keep the vibe high because there are actors and unless you're making a horror movie or the saddest drama in the world, <laughs> you need those actors to be able to be happy or whatever they need to do. Right, right. They need a positive environment right. to to do it in that's not, you know, bringing all this emotional residue their way. So in a lot of ways, to, to just completely flip on what I said earlier, maybe the most important thing isn't putting out spec work as a DP. Mm. Maybe an important thing is just making sure that if you are someone who is online that you're showing up in a way personally that you feel like is indicative of who you are. Amazing. And I, (laughs) and I, and I don't say show up in a way that is positive, ethical, that you don't use profanity, any of this stuff. I say show up as who you are because Mm. if you are that person that, you know, uses profanity and whatever, like, make sure that you are just being authentic to who you are because what will end up happening is you know maybe you'll get on a set with someone and you will have represented yourself in this um you know clean cut yes yeah, we'll yeah. say non-authentic way <laughs> eventually that facade's going to crack right especially eventually, when things aren't going right exactly yeah. uh you have to have those difficult discussions on set mm. things you know go sideways or whatever it's going to come out. And then not only are you in a situation where you are this person that the producer or the client wouldn't have hired, but now they also feel that they've been deceived, Mm. which is worse. Mm. It's not just you're not a good fit. It's that you're not a good fit and I can't trust you. So hearing this actually took me back a little bit because I forget how often I put myself out in public, whether it's YouTube, podcasting, uh, social media, whatever it is, I I don't even register how much I put myself out there. When people ask me prior to this conversation, how has YouTube impacted your DP career? And personally, I would say that it really doesn't, I don't really correlate the two at all. But after hearing this you know, perspective from Chris, I realized that it might have made more of an impact than I thought. And now I'm not proclaiming that in order to get hired as a DP, you need to have a YouTube channel, you need to have a podcast. That is not the message. That is not the point of this message. YouTube is not for everyone. Podcasting is not for everyone. And if you're in that category, don't feel ashamed about that. Don't feel any type of way. It's not for everybody. You have strengths that other people won't. These people have strengths that you won't. And that's just part of life. And I I don't want that to come across as being the message that you need to have YouTube or a podcast to get hired as a DP. So I've realized more and more that becoming a DP at a larger scale is less and less about 
I don't want to say the image that you create because that's your job is the image. But what I'm trying to say is when you become a DP, when you're becoming a DP, you're so hyper focused on the quality of the image that you're making, the equipment that you're using. You're you're so focused on how you can create the best image possible, the best lighting you can that that is usually the main focus and it's still a huge focus for me and it is a huge focus that should never go away as a DP. But there's a side of being a DP that isn't really the first thing that people think of when they're trying to become one. And that's the personality. That's the leadership. That's the human side. The reason why I say that is because in today's world, more and more people are able to create beautiful images way more easily than 15, 20, 30 years ago. The amount of content, knowledge, and information out there to teach people how to create great images is in, it's, an, it's infinite. Everyone can learn how to create a good image technically. That's why it's not the most important thing of being a DP. It is your role of being a DP is the final image, but it's not the whole picture. Filmmaking is a team sport, regardless of if it's a feature film, short film, documentary, commercial, branded content piece, whatever it is, filmmaking is creating a space where people feel collaborative, they feel safe, they feel open, and they feel respected. Being a DP also means that you are the right-hand person to the director. It is not a small job. Being a DP is a big job. A director holds a lot of trust in their DP, not only to accomplish their vision visually, but also be a person that they can communicate with, that they can talk to about things, that they can vent to, that they can collaborate with. It's truly all about trust. That is the key here, trust. And that's why it's hard for a lot of aspiring DPs to get in with these established directors. It's not because they lack the skill or competence. It's because a lot of these directors already have a working relationship with so many amazing DPs already that they truly just trust on a artistic level, creative level, and a personal level. The message is essentially that directors require a lot of trust in order to work with a DP. And that is the message that I feel I got from that podcast episode is that if you're on a project for four days, yes, you could be the best DP in the world. You could be lighting things amazing. You could have the best compositions. But if you aren't a good hang, if you aren't someone that people want to be around for breakfast in the morning before set, nobody's going to want to hire you. You have to be a good person first. You have to be able to be vulnerable. And by me having this YouTube channel, the podcast and sharing my personality, sharing my vulnerabilities, I think has allowed me to open myself up to other directors and producers and get a sense of uh, clarity that they know who I am. They, they've seen me, they've seen me grow. They know the type of person I am. They know the type of mannerisms I have. And the one thing that he, Chris said also is, if you are gonna put yourself out there, you have to be your authentic self, no matter what that version is, be your authentic self. Because when things go wrong, that's when your true self comes out. So that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the message of today's video. And again, like I said, this video might be for you. It might not be for you, but hopefully you are able to take away something from today's video. And my hope is just to provide a, a different perspective on what it means to get hired as a DP and what it truly takes. Um, so if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, let me know your thoughts and Again, the snippet from today's podcast episode is from my podcast, The Creative Gap. Uh, I have a new YouTube channel where I'll be putting up the full video versions, but also check me out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts, uh, The Creative Gap Podcast. So thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day. Peace out.